yeah so yeah by the way so uh, i'm preparing one more assignment uh, hopefully uh, i'll i'll upload it today uh, so if i'm unable to upload in mt microsoft teams then uh, i'll upload it in my web page so maybe by today evening or night i'll be able to upload it and the uh, last state of submission would be mm, i think uh, next week uh, monday i mean next to next week monday okay so you'll have holidays three days and uh, yeah some uh, monday tuesday and wednesday and then the next uh, so yeah so next to next week monday i think that will be the last state of submission so i'm trying to put some questions uh, which are numerical so that uh, you get a flavor of like questions which you'll be probably you'll be, you can expect those kind of similar kind of questions in the exam and there will be an exam maybe in march so maybe second week or third week of march i'm not very sure right now so but there will be mm, an exam i'm mean, a class test and uh, uh, the syllabus will be like whatever we had last time after that whatever we'll be discussing uh, up to let's say next week's class okay so that will be the syllabus for the next class test so don't waste your time during the holidays but uh, yeah so we try to solve all the problems in the assignment uh, which i'll be uploading and uh, yeah and uh, read about those things which i discussed okay i think uh, so main thing um, what we discussed is like Mm. Sinon, uh, coding theorem, source coding theorem, and yeah, and and how what what are codes and the Hoffman codes and stuff like that, and then we started talking about mm, capacity. So so last day what we discussed is capacity of a channel, capacity of a channel. This is what we discussed and uh, yeah uh yeah and with, we 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 i think i stated a theorem okay so this is okay so how did we define capacity okay how did we define first a channel so channel is nothing but a collection of conditional probabilities so you have let's say a random variable x here and this is the input source or you can say input random variable and you have a random variable here which is uh, output random variable and <clears throat> this is the channel and the channel is described by these probabilities so if i write generically x as a variable and the output as y uh, then what is the probability of getting y given x i think this is what uh, we have defined as as a channel okay so for all x and y so our picture was like this our picture okay let me add some dots here so yeah so yeah so this is what is uh, called the channel <coughs> that is described by this conditional probabilities uh, by the way, mm, there is another nice, I think I did not discuss this, there's a nice way of uh, thinking mm, about a channel when you have finite number of symbols, uh, finite number of, let's say, uh, input symbols or in, input alphabet, okay? So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I can say a little more about that. So, okay, so whenever I said like some input, okay, so let's say x1, x2, some xk, and let's say here the possible outputs are like y1. I think we didn't, anyway, it doesn't matter. I think last time we denoted it as a1, a2, a k. It doesn't matter, it is, let's say, some yj, okay. And there is a probability associated with this x1, x2, xk, which is called the probability associated with the random variable capital X. So we have this. Uh, so we have this uh, p x1, 
uh, dot 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 let's say pxk so essentially okay we can call we can we can we can say it like uh, this is a this is a vector so px1 the dot dot this is you can call it a probability vector xk okay this is a probability vector okay uh, in that case uh, what we can say is basically yeah so and then again if this is known to you px1 dot dot, dot pxk and all these conditional probabilities okay then of course we have something called uh, the probability distribution on the output the random variable which is let's say p y1 p y2 and dot 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 p y j okay now yeah so so this also can be called as a as a vector so this vector you can say this is a k dimensional vector so you can say this is in r to the power k plus or maybe yeah non-negative sign okay so these numbers are non-negative numbers so you can write it like uh bigger equal to so r bigger equal to means it's a set of all non-negative real numbers okay so this is how we can uh, define it okay yeah and then here and this will be this will be in hmm, r let's say j and this is a non-negative vector of course we have this sum of this dig to the definition of probabilities uh some okay so this is uh, let's say hmm, x small k k equal to 1 to capital K is equal to 1 and here also we'll have this probability of yj j equal to 1 to capital J this is 1. <laughs> now can anybody tell what is pyj in terms of the conditional probabilities can anybody say this what is this can anybody tell me what was that p of yj so it will be summation probability of x probability of yi given x xi in uh, into probability of xi okay and this is what you are saying probability of uh, let's x k this is what you are saying i um, k small k one to k yes sir okay so if that is the case now you say there is a nice relation between these two vectors okay this can be called as the input input probability vector and this is the output output uh, <clears throat> probability this is the output probability vector now, if that is the case, can I write this? So let's say P Y one, P Y two, dot dot, dot P. Well, let's say J. This will be some matrix, some matrix times let's say P X one, P X two. And dot 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 let's say p x k can i write like that so then what will be so what will be the dimension of k uh, this matrix okay the dimension has to be <clears throat> so uh, right hand side we have this this is k by one and this is j by one so this matrix then has to be has to be of order j cross k so if I write it like that, so then what is happening here? Then what should be the first row of this matrix? I mean, from this relation, what can we say about the first row of this matrix? So in first row, y1 mm -hmm. will be fixed and x will vary from 1 to k. What is what 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 should be? The, uh, my question is, what should be the entries of this matrix? Oh yes, sir. In, in the sir, first line, uh, j will be 1, y1, and x will vary. Like probability of y1, x1. Okay, so let us, let us write that. So it is 
probability of y1, x1, and probability of y1, x2. Is that what you are saying? Probability of y1 given xk. And then the second row will be probability of y2 given x1. Second, sir, and this hmm? sir, 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 screen is, is not moving like so it's stuck. The screen is stuck. Oh, no, sir, it is visible. It's visible, sir. Is this, yeah, I can see that. I, I just checked my desktop. I can see that. I can see it. Maybe Gautam, you have some problem in here. Can you see that, Gautam? Yes, sir. Now I will. Okay, so. Okay, what we're waiting. Yeah, so. Yeah, so this will be then. So this is what is called y2, let's say x2 and dot 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 probability of yk uh, y2 xk and similar here probability of yj x1 probability of yj x2 and dot 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 probability of yj xk now so okay so this is a nice matrix uh, this is nice matrix in a sense what we can observe here is this is called actually the channel matrix because this represents the channel so this matrix has entries which are conditional probabilities and which define the channel so this is called this is called the channel matrix this is called the channel matrix okay <clears throat> i mean this is a matrix corresponding to the channel but this matrix is really nice okay why is that? So first of all, we can see. So this is a non-negative matrix. Non-negative matrix means uh, entries are non-negative, right? Because their probabilities. So this is a non-negative matrix, meaning each entry, each entry is uh, okay. Each entry is let's say non-negative. Each entry is a, a non-negative real number or non-negative number which are lying between 0 to 1 non-negative real number and what is the sum of each row sum of the entries of each row i mean if you fix the first row and take the sum of it what what do you get Any idea? If you look at the picture, y1. will it be probability of y1? No, probability of y1 is here. So, probability of y1 is here. This one. But uh, before you multiply this with this number, right? When you are taking the product, so this times this, okay? This times this. So before you take the product, what are these entries of this matrix? So these are nothing but uh, this probabilities, right? So this is, let's say, probability of <coughs> getting y1 given x1. This is, let's say, probability of getting y2 given x1 and so on. So mm, what is the sum of all these? As sum of all these probabilities because uh, if you send x1 you you definitely would be getting one of this y1 y2 yj and these are the sir should it be one summation yes.
Uh, guys, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think there yes, was sir. some problem. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so if you take the sum, then what do you get for corresponding to each row? What do you get? So corresponding to each row or each column, I think corresponding to each column, we will get the sum one. Okay, corresponding to each column, we will get one and corresponding to each uh, row. What do we get? That's a good thing to say. But what do you get if you take corresponding to each column? <sighs> so if you say correspond to each column is one, and that's a property of this channel matrix, right? And then such a matrix. Yeah, go ahead. You want to say something? So will it be lossless? I mean, we are sending X1, so it will be received by any one of them at least. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. So what do you say? Okay, if a column if a column sum is one, what is what is that matrix? What it is called? Such a matrix, it has a name. You know about that? Huh? Any idea? Okay, so let us say such a matrix called a stochastic matrix. Okay, and here it will be a column stochastic matrix. The matrix is stochastic if uh, the entries are, let's say, non-negative. So basically, there is a random variable here. Okay, so there is a random variable here. There's a random variable here. And corresponding to each, this is a conditional random variable. Okay, you are fixing one, or you can say column wise also. Okay, column wise also. You can fix one. Let's say x1 is fixed. x1 is the random variable which takes value x1 okay so it's a copy of x let's say which takes x1 always so y given that x1 okay similarly second column will be y given x2 and so on so in that case it is called a column stochastic matrix okay so this is called a column stochastic matrix it's column stochastic so sometimes what happens is a channel, okay, a channel is defined by a matrix also. This is that which is what is called the channel matrix. So channel matrix means you have all the entries, okay. I mean any matrix if I give you whose uh, whose uh, whose entries are non-negative means they and uh, they are lying between and they they do not exceed one. That means I mean uh, their entries are from zero to one. Or if we just say the entries are non-negative and some of the columns, some of the entries of the column, so call, which is called the column sum, okay, is uh, one, okay, then, mm, uh, uh, so then it is called the column stochastic matrix. So basically, a column stochastic matrix always represents this thing, mm, a, a, a channel matrix or a channel, All right? So this is another way to look into the same thing. Okay. Okay, so now let us go back to our what we are doing last day. Okay. So this is another way to look at this uh, random number uh, this, this channel. Okay. So this is called the column stochastic matrix since since column sum column sum is one 
for each column. Okay, and and so any so so now we can define this is the conclusion. Any column stochastic matrix stake matrix okay represent a, a channel. Okay. Now let us go back to what we were discussing last day. Okay, so we had a channel. Okay, and uh, we had the channel capacity, and we defined some random variable. We said, okay, okay. So this is the theorem we started stating. I mean, I think we stated the theorem. We didn't do the proof. So essentially, what is it? So suppose we have this x n. Okay, there is a big thing about this n notation. This n. I'll tell you about that. But for the time being, just let assume that it is any uh, capital N. So this is nothing but some x1, x2, xn, where you can assume that like this is a copy of the x, the input random variable x is a copy of this x and it is a copy of this so n tuple of this x. Okay, and uh, so this is the n tuple. You can say the input or you can say like uh, the, you know, the source sequence. Okay, so any source sequence of length capital N is this. So then we can treat this as a random variable. So this this you can say it's a one random variable, and then similarly, what we have is y n for because for each input, with such input, we'll have an output. So we can say it like y one, y two, mm, y n, and uh, so so basically what we're saying is x bar. Okay, if this is the input, let's say x one, x two, x n. Okay, uh, then you will have this is the channel. Okay. And then you will have an output which is y bar, let's say y1, y2, yn. Okay. And then the theorem states, okay, that the following. The theorem states that so because we had we define what is called, I think I didn't recall the definition of channel capacity. Okay, let me recall the definition of channel capacity once again. Okay, let me first state the theorem. So why we're interested in this theorem? Okay, so the statement of the theorem says I. I means the, the mutual information, the average mutual information between X and Y. And this is what we are trying to achieve. So we are trying to achieve some upper bound for this. Okay, this. Uh, so and this. Okay, these are the random variable X to the power or X bar to X bar N and Y bar N. This is always less equal to because we are talking about this discrete memorialized channel. Okay, uh, so other uh, previously we talked about uh, discrete memorialized source. Okay, here we are talking about discrete memoryless channel, meaning yi. I mean, if you, if you recall, if you if you just the pick the jth outcome, let's say yj. Okay, that depends only on the input xj. So jth input. So let's say it is xj here. Okay, mm, so this is the thing. Okay, and so this is this is uh, uh, this is what it is. Okay, uh, now so yeah, so this is. Uh, sum over, I mean, let's equal to the mutual average mutual information between this, okay, x n and y n. These are the individual random variable, and this n equal to one to capital n. Okay, in fact, uh, this uh, this is what we are going to going to show. This claim, this is the claim. This is this is what 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 will follow. This and this. So this uh, i x bar n and y bar n this is less equal to n times c and the c is a channel capacity which you defined earlier so c, c was what this is the max okay were all the input probabilities okay let's say i don't remember i mean the q i think we denoted it but we are you can say like p of let's say x1 dot 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 p of some xn or whatever xk okay and then this is i okay x and y this is how we had defined uh, this is how we are defined. OK, uh, channel capacity. OK, so. Yeah, so. This is how we define what is called the uh, um, uh, capacity of a discrete memoryless channel. OK, and X here is the input random variable. Y is the input random variable. Now here what we are saying is that if you take n tuple of that random variable because it will be generating a source sequence okay and according to that you will you'll get an output sequence so then the mutual uh, because this is very important so first let us as you, uh, let us first uh, derive this result uh, that is uh, uh, mutual information to see that why we are discussing this because ultimately we will be sending 
sequence of symbols, okay, not individual symbol or not individual source alphabet, but a sequence of source alphabet. Okay, when you write an email, let's say, okay, there are there are letters, bunch of letters, okay, a word or a, a particular sentence or a particular paragraph, whatever it is, whatever you are writing, the entire message, let's say, okay. So that's a sequence of source symbols. That is a sequence of letters. Okay, so that's why we need to know how this is treated to the individual random variables for a discrete memoryless channel. Okay, so this is for uh, discrete for discrete memoryless channel. Okay, so we are talking about discrete only anyway. So this is for uh, memoryless memoryless channel. Okay, so uh, this is the proof is very simple. Okay, uh, simple in a sense, like we have to use a little bit of uh, things which we discussed earlier. Okay, and then I think uh, we can we can do that. And not only this, this equality in this equality can become equality. Okay, for certain certain cases. Okay, and what are those cases? I mean, which I recall for everything. Whenever we say there is an inequality, and that will be an equality. Okay, when something is independent, right? So, so if each x n and y n are independent, then of course they are that's the same. Same. Okay. Let us prove this theorem. So, first of all, let's say I. Sir, mm. sir, in last class you use a different notation. Okay. I mean, what did I? Yeah. So. Sir, yeah. This is. Yeah. In fellowship, x one, x two is. Yeah, this is what okay. In place of x and I just wrote x. Okay, okay, yeah. So I equal to x i belongs to it doesn't matter. Okay, yi is in zero, one, two up to j minus one. Yeah, well, that is not a problem. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is what we had denoted it like x i been. So here the source symbols are like integers zero to up to k minus one, and uh, this um, output uh, symbols are like zero to up to j minus one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So okay, so. Yeah, so here we did not discuss what are these. We just said xi. Okay, so xi here I can just write xi belongs to. I mean, I think I wanted to give you a feeling of like it can be anything, or maybe some notational convenience. I said that, or maybe not xi but xk and this yj. Okay, this belongs to let's say 0, 1 up to j minus 1. This is what we had. Yeah. So this will be then uh, probability of zero up to k minus one. Yeah. So let me write it this way. Yeah. Just a minute. Sorry, my my. I'm. I'm. Anyway, so I'm little. I'm not well today. So something is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So now we will prove this. Okay. So what do you want to prove? So this is our left hand side. OK, Y bar and. Now can anybody so, so you can assume like this is I mean this you can just write like X bar kind of a thing and X Y bar like everything. So so if you just remember the definition of uh, so because this X bar in this is an n tuple, so join random variable of X on X X n, but after all it is a random variable, right? So if you write it as X bar, then it is just random variable and Y bar to the power n capital N. This is also a random variable, right? So you can just write it as y bar. So if I write it this way, then what is the definition of mutual information between xn and yn? What is that in terms of let's entropy? You remember anything in terms of entropy? How do you define this mutual information or average mutual information? Okay. So it yeah. will be h of xn yeah. bar minus. Uh, so x and bar given y bar n. Okay, I'll write it differently. So it will be y bar n minus h of. I mean, you can write it this way also. Y n. You can just check the definition the way I introduced it, and x bar n. Okay. Yeah. So this is what it is. Okay. Now this equals to what? This equals to I can. I can write it. I can write it as h, and then y bar to the power n minus. Uh, what is this? Given this uh, two random variable, okay. How can I write? What was the definition of this? Uh, if we have two random variables, if suppose two random variable x bar y bar, then how do we write it? 
okay let me write it down and then i think we are losing time so 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 then what you can write here is let's say i equal to 1 to n i mean if you just recall what i had defined so this will be see y n bar n here is y on y to y n and x bar n is equal to x1 x2 x n so this can be written as y i given mm, y1 or to y i minus one i think yeah, someday i think maybe last day or last last day we recall this definition again we have discussed it so and then x bar to the power n so this is the definition of uh, is conditional entropy okay so this will be equal to then what this will be equal to as it is this one minus now you see although this is y i diet um, this thing uh, this i the uh, random variable uh, cross map to the i -th symbol let's say that in the sequence like this so y ij okay y n y to y n let's say any any j or anything like that and since this is memoryless so this yj depends only on xj not anything else so then what we can write is this is directly it even it does not depend on this one right so what are the outputs here in the right hand side because it is the memoryless channel so I, I only depends on this and y is independent of y1 y2 or whatever it is okay and then uh, in if you write it this uh, x bar to the power n it will be like x1 x2 dot 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 xn but it only depends on this so you can write this as i equal to 1 to n so h y i given x i okay okay since uh, this is uh, due to uh, due to the memoryless property of the channel due to the memoryless property this is the memoryless property of the channel okay so okay so now what can we say what can you say about this one that uh, this guy is always less equal to what so if you again recall our definition of uh, joint uh, entropy this will be less equal to this sum of all the individual right if you just remember i think last day also recall this definition so this will be i equal to one to n and h of of individual this h i so this will be the same it is it is one to n h of uh, y i given x i okay and but what is this so you can take the sum okay common so this will be this will be equal to sum i equal to 1 to n and then you can suggest h y h i uh, minus h of uh, y i given x i so what is that what is that right inside this will be what is this expression so it will be i uh, i of x i comma y i yeah so i x i semicolon y i and this is what we wanted to prove okay this is what we wanted to prove that this is less equal to this yeah this is what we wanted to prove and then oh my notations are different like is small and yeah i mean not a problem so it's smaller so yeah so now the now what was the channel capacity the channel capacity was for this individual individual thing right i x but if you just recall the definition of channel capacity it is for individual x and y okay for individual symbol so here this individual symbol x is nothing but some x n y n okay some x n and y n okay let's say so it is for individual uh, this thing or you can just write x and y if, if you denote it as x and y as the input and output and number and x to the power n is the n copies of that individual and number so here when you are writing x bar to the power n it is the n copies of x and here it is the n copies of y because you are supposed to receive uh, an output sequence when you send uh, a source sequence, right? So, so and uh, so this is the mutual entropy. But mutual ent uh, the, what is the definition of channel covers? It is the maximum, and uh, not the mutual entropy, but mutual information. So, so uh, uh, the max of all these possible uh, values, the mutual information is called the entropy. So this guy is always less than or equal to C for any any i. Okay, this for any i, this guy is always less equal to c. So here you are making this sum in column. Okay, so this is always because c is the max of all this x i and y. Yeah, x i and y. Once the max, this maximum is over the over the 
the probability distribution of the input random variable, right? So, so whatever distrib uh, uh, distribution, what is the probability distribution you consider for the input random variable xi? Okay, so this is always i, the mutual information between xi and yi is always also equal to c because c is give, will give you the maximum one. So then this is n times c, and that's why this is the proof that uh, if it was. So basically, ultimately, what is happening is this n has a meaning. I'll tell you later. Okay, today maybe. So this n has a meaning actually. So you can right now you can assume it like this. So if you have a, uh, you are sending source sequence of length n capital N, and you receive uh, an output sequence of capital uh, of of length capital N. Okay, then the mutual entropy. If you treat this as random variables, okay, this n tuple as random variable, then mutu uh, mutual information of this entire joint random variable is less equal to n times the capacity. Or you can say capacity of the channel. Or you can say this is uh, this uh, mutual information is less equal to the sum of the individual uh, mutual information. Okay, of the individual random variable, which are nothing but the source input and the source output random variables. Okay, and this is a big theorem which we'll be using later on. Okay, yeah, and now we'll try to prove what is called the converse of the channel encoding theorem, or Sinon's uh, coding theorem, uh, channel okay. coding theorem. So yeah, please go ahead. Sir, here, what are the yeah. probability of small x i's and small y i's? See, x i is a copy of. See, no, no, sir. I I want a small x i, which belong to zero, one, to two, k minus one. Yeah, small x i means okay. So. Okay, let's say let me define it this way. This is nothing but x1, x2, dot 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 xn. And what we said is this is a copy of x, this is a copy of x, and dot 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 this is a copy of x. Now, what is this x? This is the input source or uh, information source. Okay, so this x1 is what? This x1 is nothing but x here. Now, x is what? This will pick one of the symbols from 0 to up to k minus 1, right? So one relation of this could be it is picking something, some x1 value, okay, which is in this set 0, 1 to up to k minus 1. Now this has a probability distribution here, okay. So these are the source symbols. So you have probability 0, probability 1, and dot 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 probability of k minus 1. So whenever this x1 is picked up, okay, it's picked up with some probability. So this is the random variable, which is the x, the input source. Okay. Similarly, x2. Whenever x2 is the same thing, x2 is also here. X2 is also uh, x2 also belongs to here. Okay. But this has a probability distribution p0, p1 to k. I mean, if you just remember the definition of this of this channel, this is the channel. So what we are saying here is this is zero. This is one dot dot dot. This is let's say k minus one. Okay, and each of this sort symbol have, has a probability. Okay, this there is a probability associated, and the random variable is x. When you send x, you will receive some y. Okay, send x means you will pick one particular letter. Then here you will get one of these letters. Let's say from zero to up to j minus one. Okay. Now what we are saying is instead of setting one source letter, you set a sequence of source letter. Okay, you say you send x1, x2, dot, 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 let's say xn. Okay, you send this one. That means this will take a corresponding value from 0, 1 up to k minus 1. This will take a value corresponding to this one. So this is a, you can say this is a realization. This is, when you write this small, small x1, small x, small x, and this is a realization of this x1, x2, and xn respectively. So x1 can take it. x1 is x only, nothing. x1 is this x1. Okay, because you are say you are for example you for example this <clears throat> let's say this uh, zero one up to k minus one yeah, okay is nothing but the a, a b c d up to let's say z okay now we are constructing a word okay so word let's say you take um, send okay this first symbol is s okay so this s corresponds to the somewhere here then e okay this is somewhere here this n somewhere here and d somewhere here okay. So it is like that. So it is like of length four, okay? But here there is a catch. Here they are not independent, but we are assuming that it's an independent thing, okay? Uh, so if you if you consider memory source, then they are they are not in. Uh, so they are independent. So A and B and these are all independent. X one is independently picked. X two independently picked, and so on. So if you consider n as four, here n as n as four, 
Okay, so then this S is picked with some probability. There is a probability for S, choosing S. There's a probability for choosing E. There's a probability for N and real probability for D. You got it? Or, I mean, did I make any sense? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So, I mean, you will see why I am talking about this one. Okay. Because what will happen? Okay. Uh, let me let me just uh, talk about this. I mean, uh, gradually we'll come to that. Okay. So, so what we're trying to do now? I mean, if you just recall, what is the? Ch I mean, informally speaking, so this is informal. Okay. Because probably we'll do it in the formal sense. So this is Shannon's channel coding theorem. Okay. Shannon's Shannon's channel coding theorem. Channel coding theorem. What does it say? Channel coding theorem. Okay, that what see what did we do till now? We we talked about source code. Okay, we had source information source which is which we modeled as a random variable x. Okay, and since it is a random variable, there is a probability distribution associated with the symbols or the source letters. And then we said, okay. We can design a code like a binary code, okay, for each of the symbols. That part is done, okay, from the from the, the the part of the sender, okay. That part is done. Now we are talking about channel, okay. What is the main problem with the channel? The channel, okay, depending on whether you have this variable length coding or let's say constant length coding or a fixed length coding, okay, you'll be transmitting this uh, bits, okay, which are written in terms of bits now, zero, one, whatever, dot, 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 okay. Like like for for each source letter, you have a sequence of zero one. Let's say now, if you have multiple source letters, let's say word, okay, which is a multiple multiple, uh, which a collection of let's say uh, source letter. So then what will happen is so then accordingly you have a collection of code words for and each code word is for one consecutive one consecutive source letter. So we have a sequence of sequence of zero ones. Okay, we have a sequence of strings of zero ones because we have a sequence of source symbols sequence of source letters okay now when you are want, when you want to transmit it then then there is a problem with the channel okay what is the problem the problem is there is a rate per second let's say okay so meaning you can you can transmit let's say 100 bits per second or you can submit uh, transmit let's say 50 bits per second so there is a there is a problem with the channel because uh, you cannot send arbitrarily large uh, let's say bits of information per second. Okay, so you cannot do that. Okay, but simultaneously, there, simultaneously there is another problem because whatever you want to send, that has to be uniquely decoded, right? So there are two things. One is the 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 the, the, the source sequence, which were source sequence, meaning the sequence of source letters. Okay, that what you are sending, that has to be uniquely decoded. At uh, that should be uniquely decoded, let's say, at the receiver's end. And there is a problem with the channel. There is a limitation about the channel because there is a channel capacity, or you can say, you can say there, there are how many bits per second you can send. So that that's the constant about the channel. Okay. And how we define channel capacity? Actually, you will see if I if I can do it today that how this channel capacity, okay, will be related to, and this is what is the source coding theorem. How will be related to? how you transmit i mean how means uh, how many numbers of bits you transmit through the channel and this channel capacity will 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 give you the limit that like how many bits you can send when there will be no error i'll define what is called error or not okay there will be no error in some sense okay now the thing is here we are talking about that channel is Defined in terms of maximal entropy because that's the property of the channel. It should not depend on the this probability distribution of the input channel. Okay, so I'm uh, sorry, not the input channel, but input source. Okay, the information source. Okay, whatever information source, what the probability distribution you take doesn't matter. Channel capacity is the maximum possible mutual information between the output and the input random variables. Okay, now what is the error? Okay, so so. So in the data transmission system, like whenever you transmit some kind of a data in a generic sense, okay. In fact, you will see that mutual information is not of great interest, but the probability that source letters are incorrectly produced at the let's say destination that is much more important. Maybe you can send a less number of bits, okay, through the channel, but there should not be any error, like the, the, the bits should not be flipped in between whenever you are sending the channel. So 
error probability, like what is the probability of error when you are sending a bunch of symbols together or you are sending a source sequence, that will play a much, much big role. So Sanel's channel coding theorem says, okay, I'll define what is error, but before that, Sanel informally, Sanel channel coding theorem says, okay, that if the source entropy parts, because see, what I'm saying is how many bits you can send, okay, through the channel. So there is a time. How many bits you can send through the channel, let's say per second or per unit time, let's say per millisecond, per nano, whatever it is. Okay, there is a time or per hour, whatever it is. So now per hour when you are or per uh, second or per unit time when you are sending, okay, there is a source entropy that how many symbols you are say, saying, okay, sending. So that this theorem states that that if the source entropy per unit time it's less than the channel capacity per unit time, then there almost will be of no error. This is what is the channel channel coding channel 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 code theorem says. Okay, so if so, this is informal, but I will define all this what is called probability error and so on just in a while. Okay, in a little while I'll define those things. So, so the, the informally the channel coding theorem it says that if the source entropy, source entropy, per unit time, per unit time, okay, k is less than the channel capacity, okay, per unit time, then the error, okay, error probability, let's say, can be arbitrarily more small, okay, small, okay, or can be reduced, let's say, or can be arbitrarily small, okay, mm, using or design actually using okay using a proper encoder and decoder okay so this is what is the channel uh, channel coding theorem it says that if the number of bits let's say which you can send through the channel per second if that number let's say okay so there is an entropy related to that in the source entropy if the source entropy okay and I'll tell you how this time, okay, how many bits, how it is related to the channel capacity, okay? So source entropy, if it is less than the channel capacity per unit time, then the error almost will be zero. This is what it says, okay? Now, what we are trying to prove is the converse of this. What is the converse? If the channel capacity, or if the source entropy, let's say, per unit time, is more than channel capacity, Part of time, and there will definitely be some error. This is what our goal right now. Okay, that if the source capacity is more than the channel capacity per unit time, then there is always a positive. The probability of error is always positive. Okay, this is what we are trying to prove now. Okay, so before before we do that, let us first okay prove some theorems because we have to um, use those theorems in order to prove uh, prove this. Uh, Converse of the channel coding theorem, okay? Uh, channel coding theorem. Earlier, what we proved is the source coding, okay? Now we are doing it for the channel coding. So the first theorem is, first theorem is, <clears throat> let's say, let x and y be the, I mean, whatever in the standard sense, okay? X and y, okay? So let us put it in general. So let x and y, okay, be the random variable, be the random variable. Variable, okay, because what, what is happening is when you are sending this some symbol, let's say a1, a2, let's say k, or whatever it is, okay, uh, a1, a2, a k, let's say, or a k minus one, whatever. Uh, so then uh, at the receiver, you should receive one of this a1, a2, a k minus one, or a k, right? So if you now treat this x and y as a as an input and number variable and as an output and number variable respectively okay 
then the sample space will be fixed, which is A1, A2, AK. Okay, so if I consider two random variables, so let this be random variables with the sample space of the sample points. Okay, let's say A1, A2, let's say AK. Okay, then whenever you send, let's say AK, small AK or AI, you must get okay. I mean, there is a K and K confusion anyway. So, I'm small or big, or you can write some other symbol, let's say M or something like that. So, A1, A2, AM, let's say. And so, if you are sending some AI, okay, I mean, AK, which I think this is a standard edition we're using. Okay, let me just say AK. Okay, then you are supposed to get some uh, BI or BJ, okay, and that BJ has to be equal to this AI, okay. So, if you are sending, so this is the channel, okay, this and this, the X and Y. So if you are sending, let's say AI, so you are you are receiving some, let's say BJ. If BJ is not equal to AI, then there is an error. Okay, so there is an error. So now we'll be defining what is called the probability of error. Okay, so let us define define the probability that there is an error occurred, okay? Probability, the probability of error or the error probability is that X and Y, X is like a genetic notation here and Y is let's say some Y, that X and Y are different. So you send X, small X, but you receive small Y. I mean, the receiver received small Y are different is uh, define the product as this. Let me denote it as PE, which is the product of error, which will be sum over X, okay? Sum over Y not equal to X, probability of XY. What is probability of XY? This is a joint random variable, okay? X and Y, this is a joint random variable. And then, X is not equal to Y. So joint random variable means what? You know, let's say, you know all this probability of XI and YJ. You all know this for all I and J, okay? For all I and J, you know that. Then probability of this, when X is not equal, so let's say, yeah. So if I not equal to J, whenever it is, okay? This XI and YJ, by the way, from A1, A2, AK. So it's a, let's say, let us assume that you have a1, A2, A3, A4. These are the four symbols you want to uh, you have in your source alphabet, let's say. Okay. Then there is a probability for A1, A1, A1 that you will send A1, you will receive A1. Okay. So that's the conditional probability of the channel. And here, since this is a joint distribution, you have some meaning of probability of A1, A1. Like both values are A1. You can have probability A1, A2, probability of A1, A3, uh, and so on. Probability of A1, A4. Similarly, you'll have probability of A2, A1, okay? Which is exactly probability A1, A2, by the way. And then probability of A2, A3, okay, and so on. So you have all these probabilities. Now, what is the probability of error? If you sum up all this X, Y here, where X is not equal to Y, and then sum over all X. That means whenever you have this kind of a situation, this kind of a situation, this kind of a situation, and then sum over all A1. A1 means the whatever the source is, okay? So for this particular example, it is like sum of this product of A1, A2, product of A1, A3, product of A1, A4, and then sum over all this A1 means all the possible input out, uh, probable input. That means this plus this plus this plus this plus this and so on. So whenever X and Y are different, okay, that we're doing, this is what is called the probability of error, okay, from the joint random variable. Then, then what we're saying is this probability of error will satisfy the following. And this is the theorem, the statement. The claim is we want to show that this probability of E times log of, log of this K minus one plus H of P, H of P is nothing but the entropy of P. It is always bigger equal to this X given Y. So this is the conditional entropy. The conditional entropy is always less equal to this value. So meaning, you have a lower bound, this one. You have a lower bound, okay, of 
the error probability in terms of, of the conditional entropy. This is what we want to prove. And this guy is nothing but the entropy corresponding to this one. So it is minus P log of P minus one by P one minus P and log of one minus P. Okay. So this is what we are going to prove now. So we just define nothing. We just define X and Y. And what are those? They are just like two random variables. You have a joint random variable and you have a joint distribution. Then we define the probability of error. And then we are saying that this probability error must satisfy this one. Okay, if that is the probability of error. So this is the theorem. So it is kind of a generic theorem. Okay, now let us, let us if this proof is also very, very simple, by the way. So, okay, so what is the proof? Proof of this fact. And this, this is very important because it talks about a bound regarding the error probability, that how much error will there be? Okay, so this is a function of error. You can say like that. Okay, so entropy of the error, okay, H of P, and this is some P to E times, times some constant. Okay, this will give me this. Why we're interested in this? Because we want to reduce the error. So I need to know, okay, that what, what is the amount of error? But here at least I got that it is bigger equal to some number which I can calculate given X and Y, because if I know the joint probabilities, then I can find the marginal probabilities and I can find out then the conditional probabilities. So I have this information already, okay? So now I'm saying that probability error is always bigger or equal to this guy. And the proof is very, very simple. So how can, uh, so what is the proof? Let's say if I write this, what is that? What is this is the entropy, conditional entropy. What is the definition here? Conditional entropy? Anybody? What is the definition of conditional probability? Uh, sorry, conditional entropy? So it will be double summation X, O, and Y. Prob okay. Probability X, comma, Y. Okay. Okay, because this is. Okay. Now, this we can write it to the following. You see how I'm manipulating this thing. So this I can write it as or y and sum x not equal to y, let's say. I mean, you can write x, y, it doesn't matter. P uh, x, y log of one minus uh, one by P x given y plus sum over x, y, where let's say x, y. So this is the not equal part, which I took out and then the equal lead part because this is for all x, y, okay? So I, 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 I separate it, okay? And then this is probability of x, y, and then this is log one by probability. I did nothing, okay? I did nothing. So I just separate this thing, equal terms and not equal terms, because I need that error, okay? Now, so I wanted to prove that this guy is bigger or equal to, this guy is bigger or equal to this. So I want to show that the right-hand side, this guy, minus this guy, okay, is less equal to zero. This is what I'm going to prove now. So then, h of x given y minus probability of error log of k minus one uh, minus the entropy of this p, the probability of error, will be what? Okay, there is a lot of calculation here, but let me, okay. So this guy is nothing but this guy, okay, first of all. And here is a probability, and here is a constant, k minus one, and here is the entropy. Entropy, again, can be written as, you know, if I just expand the entropy, uh, then what we can do, we can write it here. Yeah, because I need to do manipulation a little bit here. So here it is like minus of P. Sir, yes. Sir, in the above line, uh, the summation Y will be the in the next term also, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wrote it instead of double summation, I just, yeah, you can, of course, of course, of course. So this, I mean, here also I could have just written one symbol. I mean, here, here, because x i both are varying, right? X i both are varying. I could, I, I, would have, I could have just written x comma y. Here also I could have written just x not equal to y. It doesn't matter. Okay. So because both are variables, x and y both are variables. So P E log. What was that? Uh, H. Uh, so what I was writing. Okay, I was writing. I think the entropy, right? Yeah, entropy. Okay, here is the plus entropy. Okay, so if I take here this minus this, so here it will minus. 
will pass plus okay uh, just a minute so plus of this uh log what will be that log p okay mm. plus of one minus p e log of one minus p e okay yeah <sighs> now what we can do okay and this h this hx given y is nothing but this guy then i have to so i basically have this minus uh, this plus this minus this the right hand part like the entire thing here okay yeah so what i can possibly do is this is log here right mm, this is minus okay and this is this so okay what is p product of error this is exactly product of error you can write here it is sum over now define product of error here you see y not equal to x x or here also you can write x not equal to y y okay p of x y this is what is the product of error so product of error is basically you have this term. So you can write sum over y, sum over x not equal to y, product of x, y. Okay, this is how we can uh, define the product of error. And this is a constant. And this is a minus symbol. Minus means you can take this as plus and you can write one by this. Okay. So then I will take the common term from here, this, this number and this number. So if I do that, so then this will be sum over, let's say x not equal to y, p x y, log of, yeah, log of, uh, okay, I have this constant. Oh, there is one more p here. I can take this also common, okay? So this is log p. Okay, so if I combine this two again, so if I combine this two, then I'll get PE log of PE by K minus one. This is what I'll get. So then uh, this PE is same as this one. So from this previous end, so I mean, this is just a manipulation, okay? This will be PE by K minus one times P of X given Y. This is from these two terms, okay? Now one minus p, okay, this remaining term. One minus p is what? If p e is the probability where it is not equal, then one minus p will be what? This is all equal, so like here, this term. So again, I do the simple manipulation here. Then I'll get for all, okay, x uh, equal to y, okay, and then this will be p x y log of one minus p e by probability of x given y. Okay, this is what I'll have here. So this term is this one. I want to show that this is less equal to zero. Okay, so I have to use some less less than equal to sign. Okay, now recall that I will use this inequality before also due to the convexity of the function of log. Okay that log of, let's say z, is always less equal to log of e, okay, times z minus one. This we proved, I mean, this we mentioned earlier. So if I use that, so then I can apply the property of log here, I can apply the property of log here. So then, so here log is removed actually in the right-hand side, there is no log, so only this constant log, okay. So then the right-hand side, I can write this as less equal to and both in and both sides there will, there will be a loggy there will be a loggy i can take the loggy common loggy and then i can write what happens okay this will be sum over x not equal to y all such x y and p x y and then this will be this minus one okay this minus one so it will be p e by k minus one times p of x given y minus one so this is one term okay or you can term a bigger bracket 
and then plus this will be sum over all x y where it is equal to y uh, p x y and then one this minus one so this will be one minus p e by p x given y minus one Okay, so this will be what? Now here again, I have to do some manipulation, it seems. Okay, now see this will be multiplied by this, and then there will be again one term minus one. But if you multiply this with this, what will remain? This is px given y. px given y is nothing but p of xy divided by p of y. Right, so if you multiply this with that, with this term, then P of XY will vanish and the PY will come in the position of PXY. So this will be, let's say log E or all sum X not equal to Y and or all X by the way. So this is all X, I'm not writing both the same summation here. So then PY, okay, uh, PY, and then PE tie K minus one, we can take that as a constant K minus one, okay? Yeah, then this minus sum over all PXY, okay? So X not equal to Y PXY, okay? Uh, PXY. Now same thing here will also happen. So this will be plus, when you multiply this with this one, same thing will happen, sum over X, equal to y right so okay i will take out one minus p anyway i can write it here for the time being but it can be taken out so okay what is that this times okay this will be p times y and uh, p of y okay yeah minus the same thing sum over all xy xy when x is equal to y in that thing okay yeah so this will be what now can anybody tell me what will be this one okay this guy you can this guy you can definitely say okay i'll talk about this guy a little later let's say this guy will be what this is nothing but uh for our error this is how we have defined over all xy when x not equal to y this is what is the probability of error, okay? Over all x, y, y not equal to x or x not equal to y. So this is the probability of error. This is for sure. Okay, then, uh, okay. And here, this guy will be one minus p, right? This is for x equal, all x, y, x is equal to y. So this will be then minus, one minus p e so this is done now what will be this term one minus p e what will be this term hmm? what will be that term any idea <laughs> Hmm? Yeah, let I think I have to write all the double assumptions, otherwise, uh, I cannot get it. What is that? Okay. What was that? This was summation of all y. Oh. Summation of all y. And that was summation of all y. Okay. It's equal to y. This will be somewhere all y. Some were all y. This will be okay. This will get multiplied here for some were all y. This is all some were all y. 
So this will be equal to P Y. OK, times sum over Y, just a minute. This will be sum over all Y. Sum over all Y. This is what I require. And then whatever I have over all Y. And here also I will have sum over all Y I. OK, sum over all Y I. So, okay, yeah. Now, so this sum of, so I can take this constant out and then I will have sum over all i py, which is one because py is nothing but a probability distribution, okay? So p of y for all y. So this will give me plus of one minus pe, and from here, from here, what I'll have, okay. So if I recall this, this, this example here, so that will be actually k minus one. Why? P not equal to x, right? X, sorry, x is not equal to y, and then you take somewhere all y, okay? X not equal to y. And then you take sum over all y here. So what is happening is p11 is not there, let's say here, but this is there. If you take the sum of all this different terms, so there will be sum over all this will be equal to one, and there will be three of this because there are four there will be three and for a2 there will be three and for a4 there will be three and so on. So if you just add it up, okay, so that will be k minus one. So this k minus one and that k minus one will get cancelled and then this will be just p. So what I'll do is, okay, you can do this uh, calculation again and verify that whatever I have done is correct. Whatever I have done is correct, but uh, just also you can check it. So then yeah, so everything will get cancelled and then it will be zero. So this term will be just zero, so it is zero. So what we proved is that this, okay, this guy is less equal to zero. So that means this is what we have achieved. This inequality follows. Okay. But anyway, this is some algebraic manipulation, okay, which you can do, I think. Just just look at the derivation and then you can you can you can just verify whether this is correct. Okay. Now the thing is, whenever we have this, okay. So what does it say? This theorem. The theorem says that when you have this, okay, let me just say what the theorem says. So what is the conclusion here? Conclusion is one if you have this channel x and y with this communication system let's say so x has a probability distribution y will also have a probability distribution there are some input source symbols or source alphabets okay let's say one a two a k or whatever zero one up to k minus one doesn't matter then what you are saying is probability of error okay what is that that if you send some x and receive some y and x is not equal to y. So this is how we have defined it, right? So sum over x not equal to y over solve x. Okay, probability of uh, x, y. This is a joint probability. So this is how we define the probability of error. Then we said that there is a function which is probability of e times m minus one, uh, sorry, k minus one. Uh, yeah, plus HP times, okay, this was log. So log of this plus entropy of P, this is bigger to H X given Y. This is what we have proved, okay? That means what we have done is here is, if you just draw this, just draw this, that this is probability of error, then this will be some kind of a function like that, okay? Because entropy is kind of a, yeah. So so here you will get like this function. Let's say this is some f of p 
So here it is f of p e. Okay. And then this is the re this is let's say the h x given y. Okay. Then uh, this is the region. Okay. This is the admissible region you can say. Okay. And what is this by the way? This is I mean this is interesting. This is h x minus uh, mutual implementation of X and Y. I mean, if you just define mutual implementation. So that means what you have here is this quantity, this quantity in the right hand, uh, this Y axis, this quantity is the uncertainty of X minus whatever information you know about X from Y. The remaining, so HX, the excess information, okay, HX minus IXY. So this error, probability of error, is bigger equal to that information, which is entropy of the random variable, the uncertainty about the random variable, and you subtract from there whatever you know about the random variable after knowing what is y. So this has a clear cut meaning now. So probability of error, probability this has a clear cut meaning now, the entire thing. So probability of error, this one, probability of error, let's say, okay, or the function of the probability of error is bigger equal to this, Inform amount of information, which is uncertainty about x minus whatever you know about x after knowing y. So the remaining uncertainty about x, okay. So then the error will be bigger equal to that. So this is what is the meaning of this. Now what we'll do is this is for any x and y input random variable and y put random uh, yeah output random variable. Now we'll extend this theorem into a more general setup. Instead of X and Y, now suppose we have a bunch of X and bunch of Y, then what is what is the bound for the error, error probability, okay? So now we extend, we extend the above theorem, extend the above theorem, uh, theorem for source sequences. Sequences, let's say you are sending, let's say x to the power l and y to say my notation earlier I had written x bar to the power capital N and here I am writing x bar to the power l because of something. I'll tell you why. And this is l, okay? Because that, okay, I'll, I'll tell you in a little way. So this is source sequence, okay? Uh, for this, okay? So that's a sequence of source symbols, okay? And then the question will be, what is the probability of error here? Because probability of error would define what is called between between two random variable x and y. But here we have l copies of the same random variable. Here we have l copy of the same random variable. So here, what we are trying to uh, define the error as the average error. Average here because there is no probability distribution here on the error. So what we'll define is what is called the arithmetic average like the sum by the division, okay? So let us first define this. So then I'll define a function of the error there. So the, so um, the arithmetic, okay, average of average probability of error or the error probability error probability, let me define as this, oh, PE, okay? Okay, over a sequence of L source letters, okay? It's defined as the, this is just the arithmetic mean you can say. So probability of E is nothing but then sum over one by L, okay, of what? P E L. Now I'll tell you what is a small L, L equal to one to L. So this P E L means, so whenever you are sending, let's say, X1, X2, XL, you will receive some Y1, Y2, YL. Then for, let's say some YL here, you send, let's say XL here, okay, so XL. So suppose there is a mistake on this lth term. So the probability there, so then that is the probability of the original probability. 
which a uh, probability of error. Pro error probability of whatever we have defined. Because it's a lth copy. This is a lth copy of of the input random variable x and the output random variable y. So this is what I, I am denoting in a P E L because it is the error probability corresponding to the lth entry or lth term of the source sequence. Okay. So this is I'm denoting as PEL. So this we already have defined for individual random variable X and Y. Now what we are saying is if I send a bunch of symbols, source sequence X1, X2, XL, then I'm considering the average error probability, which is the arithmetic mean of those errors. Okay, this is how I'm defining it. And then we are will prove uh, what is called uh, a bound for the error probability of which is the average error probability using this uh, x to the power l and y to the power l. So what we are so what is this l? What we are talking about? So here now I am defining what is l and what is n. Okay, and this is how I'll interpret it once I prove this theorem. Okay, so this is my communication system here. Okay, this is my this is my discrete source. This is my source. Okay. And here in the source, I am generating a number, let's say x bar, which is x1, x2, dot, 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 xl. This is what I am generating, okay, and sending. Then there will be a coder here. And I see, since there is a limit, okay, of number of bits per second or per unit time, which you can send through the channel, so I'll not be probably able to send all the code words corresponding to, I mean, if you put the code words corresponding to each of these excise one by one, then that will be a huge sequence, okay? Let's say this, this code word for X1 has length N1 for N2, and this is something NKLL, let's say. Then I'll have a, a code word of sequence n1 plus l2 dot 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 plus nl. So that's a huge sequence that I want to transmit through the channel. Okay. But I may not do that because there is a capacity of number of bits per second or per, per unit time. I can only send, I can only send some bits, not all the bits. So maybe what I can send through the channel is let's say n number of bits, which is capital N. So here now I'm defining it. Oh, mm, there is a change of symbol. <laughs> okay, so let me write here is, mm, okay, so let me just change the symbol, okay? Not a problem, big deal. So this is, this is, let's say, so I cannot write everything X, so let me just change the symbol here. Uh, let me say this is um, some, some U, U bar, which is U1, U2, some UL, this is what the source symbols is that this is because it's a source okay the source letters are the sequence are the source sequence okay just let me write it as source sequence this is just the source sequence okay then through the uh, code okay i'll once i generate this suppose i'll be able to send this as this x1 x2 dot 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 xn and then this will pass through a channel. Okay, and then I'll have something like Y bar here, which is Y1, Y2, Yn. And then we have a decoder here. And then we'll receive this some, let's say VR, which is V1, V2, VL. And this is my destination. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. So here the source symbol, okay, a sequence of source symbols, you want it to be well, okay. So let me, let me prove the next theorem, okay. So this is now uh, in terms of error probability, but error probability is the average error probability, okay, of all this. So this is our next theorem, which says the following. Suppose, suppose, u bar l and b bar l. Let's say u v denote the random variables corresponding to the information source, okay, and the information output. Okay, be the joint 
Okay, suppose this and this are the joint uh, random variables. Okay, of corresponding to uh, so this is the L copies of U, uh, V copies, uh, L copies of V corresponding to let's say and re a realization, let's say um, U bar, which is let's say U1, U2, UL. And let's say V bar, which is V1 dot 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 VL. OK. Respectively, and this each UI and VI, let's say, where it says U small n and V small n, OK. They belongs to some, let's say, symbol, let's say A1, A2, some AK. OK. Then what we want to prove is, this is also very simple. Then we want to prove is, this average error times log of k minus one plus the entropy of this, okay, is bigger equal to one by L H U bar L given V bar L. So now this will be in terms of the entropy of this joint random variable, uh, conditional random variable, U bar L and V bar L. Same thing, I mean, just we are extending the proof. Here I gave the proof now, for individual X and Y, or can say U and V. And now I'll use this theorem, okay, in order to prove the next theorem here. And this is very, very simple, okay? So the proof. Okay, first of all, uh, as you know, I mean, I will not repeat this here again. U bar L and V bar L. This is always less equal to L equal to one to L H UL, VL, okay? This is what will happen. Okay, we, we talked about that, I think, okay? Or you can just check, okay? This is, let's say, homework, you can just check. Homework, just check. Some of the individual random number, okay? Okay, now, from the previous theorem, okay? What do we have? We know all the bound of all this, okay? That this guy, okay, is less equal to this. Yeah, so this is U and B, you can consider it like this. Eh? This is less equal to product of E log of K minus one plus entropy of P. So let us use that. So then what will happen? Okay. Then, uh, what we'll say, less equal to, okay, so this is less equal to, let's say, overall, L equal to 1 to L. So probability of E, but here I'll write L, okay, because for the Lth I'm doing it. So then log of K minus 1 plus entropy of P of El. Okay, so this implies what? If we divide both sides by one by L, this is one by L H U bar L given V bar L less equal to. Now, if you take this divided by this divided by one by L, so this is what is the average probability. So it is P E, okay, log of K minus one plus one by L h of p e l okay oh, here is the sum l equal to one to l so we are almost done except the fact that this one this is remain to prove can anybody tell me how do i prove this so this guy has to be replaced by h of average of this can anybody tell me how do i do that So the claim is now, what we want to prove is, okay, that uh, one by L sum over L equal to one to L H P E L, this will be less than equal to H of P E. This is what we want to prove. So what you do is you just write the expression of this and use 
So in order to prove this, let's say, use the inequality that log of z, let's equal to that due to the convex function again, this property. Okay, this is also homework, so you can prove that. I use many a times the same inequality. So this is homework. You can use it to prove that. And this will prove that um, the original theorem, okay? Let this register. This register. Okay, this is true. So what is happening right now? Now, if we just look back, and see here what is happening here. What I'm saying is, this is a source sequence e1, e2, e well. Okay. There is another sequence here, which is sequence of let's say some here. Okay, let me define it like this is like um, source input. Okay. Um, source. Not exactly source input, but let's say source sequence. Okay, this is fine, but let us say this as channel input. This is channel input. This is channel output. Channel output, and this is also source output. Source output. So we have four random variables here. We have u l, u to u bar to u bar l. Then we have x bar n. Then we have y bar n, and then we have v bar l. These four random variables are jointly, okay? Are this is a, I mean each of this. This is a sequence of copies of u bar. This is a sequence of copies of x this is a sequence of copies of y and this is a sequence of copies of v four random variables okay now then the question will be which random variable depends on which one okay so here i have to make a statement okay which are independent which are dependent let's say because i'll be using this fact to derive the i mean you almost derived it but just let that we want to conclude this everything in terms of the inverse of the source coding so here we want to Include, I'm going to make a note of it that y is, or y bar, let's say, y bar, one relation of the output, channel output, okay, is independent, or let's say conditionally independent, independent, okay, of u bar given x or given x bar see y bar this is the output of this input x bar so y bar has no relation with u bar yeah x bar is obtained from u bar but y does not consider that part y bar and u bar they are actually independent given x bar so that's why it's conditionally independent because y bar depends only on x bar this is a property of the channel so it depends only on x bar this is one observation and next observation is b bar okay is conditionally independent okay of u bar and x bar given y bar so the b bar is obtained from y bar only what is u bar and x bar it has no connection because this decoder only decodes what is the received one, which is y bar. So b bar is independent of u bar x bar, and y bar is independent of u bar. Okay, these are the two things we have to remember from this picture. Okay, because I'll be using this. <sighs> okay, now, now uh, we'll prove. I mean, prove is two line. We just proof is just two line, but it is the biggest theorem in communication theory or maybe the, the but this is a consequence of what is the Shannon's results okay and this is called the data processing theorem now i'll prove the data processing theorem proof is very very simple data i mean whatever is given whatever we have derived from that we can prove this data processing theorem but it has huge conclusion theorem okay 
So the following thing. Consider the source sequence. Source sequence, let's say u bar, which is u1, u2, dot 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 u l. Okay. And let's say you have v bar, x bar, y bar, so on. This whatever the picture. Okay, see the diagram. I'm just fixing this u1, u2, u l, and of course, source sequence ends, let's say v bar. Okay, this is v1 dot 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 vl and you have the same x bar which is x1 x2 xn and y bar which is uh, y1 y2 yn okay now so so see the picture so this is how they are related see the picture picture above picture of the communication system then the conclusion of the theorem is the following okay that if U bar is connected to the destination through a sequence of n channel uses, then I of UL VL plus is equal to I of XN YN. So this is what? This is the average mutual information between this U and the V, okay? between let's say u bar and v bar all possible u bar and v bar okay and this is the average mutual information of or on the n number of uses of the channel Okay, so if you use capital N number of use of the same channel, each time you are sending is a, a bunch of binary code. So what is happening here? Let us go back to this again. So what is the meaning of that to data data processing theorem? It says the following. What is that picture? Where is that picture? Yeah, here. Source was here, E1, E2, UL. Now, since this is a source, you have source code for E1, E2, and UL. Then let's say you have generated a binary source code. So for E1, there is a code word, U2 for so there is a code one, UL for there is a code word, okay? Now the channel will not permit you to send everything all together. So you divide the entire source sequence, okay? Into N number of sequences, X1, X2, X, N number of sequences, and then you transmit each of the sequence one by one. So n times you are using this, okay? Then the mutual information between X bar and Y bar, okay, is bigger equal to the mutual information between U bar and L bar. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. This is the theorem, okay? And the proof is very, very simple. So the proof follows from this fact First of all, you see, I mean, if you just can recall it, okay, that I of, I mean, let me ask you this, uh, UL and YN given X bar N is equal to zero. Can you tell me why is this?
when this mutual information is zero for two random variables? Is anybody there? So if Xn is given, then, then we already know. So there is no other information. No, given means here due to this property. You see? y bar is conditionally independent of u bar given x bar so if x is given okay y and u there is no connection between y and u from this picture this y bar is independent of this x, uh, u okay so the mutual impression between x bar and y bar is zero so that's why i have written this one y and u okay there is no given this x there is no mutual information so mutual information is zero now let us recall mm, uh, some result from which we uh, defined earlier, okay, and which we used earlier. So when we talked about different uh, uh, information measures. So recall, this is just recall, okay, because from this we'll derive some result. Uh, if you take this, what you can write? Mutual information build is this. This is the joint random variable x or you can write comma because i don't want to write comma because then semicolon comma everything is there so yz means the joint random variable yz so the mutual emission between x and yz okay the random joint random variable then you can see that we have shown that this to be equal to this plus this given y and we also have seen that this is symmetric so this is i x given z plus i x y given z okay this you can prove or otherwise if we want to prove you can prove this okay just using the definition of the mutual information or average mutual information so now from this since this equals to both this and this let's say this is star and this is double star then so the star and double star both are same. So using that, what we can say is I of X E, okay, will be equal to, okay, I of X Y plus I of, mm, okay, so here, uh, what I'm writing this plus let's say ix given z given y okay plus or minus ix this y given z now everything we put together here in this setup okay so here what we'll do is this guy is zero let's say this guy is zero here okay so if I assume that this guy is zero, okay, if this equal to zero, then we have this inequality, this equality. But we also prove that this mutual information, conditional mutual information is always bigger or equal to zero. In fact, this was also in the assignment, last assignment, the last question. So this guy is bigger or equal to zero. So that means what we can so say is I of X z is bigger equal to i of x y okay if i of x y given z is equal to zero this is what is the observation from here now since this guy is equal to zero so using that here what you can say okay we can say the corresponding x y g will satisfy this so then we can say i of u bar l and y bar n is less equal to i of x bar n and y bar n okay now this is one thing that this is uh, equal to zero now another thing so this is derived from the first condition of the communication system that u bar and y bar are independent we also said that u bar and v bar are also independent given y okay because v only depends on y so further 
further we have this i of u bar l and v bar l given y bar n is equal to zero using the communication channel okay this is the case then using the similar logic as we derived here the similar logic which implies okay that i of u bar l v bar l is less equal to i of u bar l and y bar n so now this guy is less equal to this and this guy is less equal to this then combining these two what we have therefore let's say this is one and this is two therefore from one and two what we can write i u bar l e bar l okay which is less equal to i from 2 u bar l y bar n now again if i apply for even if i apply 1 then this is less equal to i x bar n y bar n so this is what is called the data processing theorem so you had a sequence source sequence and you convert it into binary sequence and send it through the channel. Then the mutual inversion between the source input and the source output, when the source input and the source output is less equal to mutual or average mutual information between the random variable, these two random variables are the channel input and the channel output. Okay, so this is the channel input and channel output. And the significance is, is hell here, recall. So this is most important note. So it seems today I'll not be able to tell you the converse, but it is it will take just 20 minutes. But anyway, maybe I'll do it next day. So note here is L is the length of length of the sort sequence. Sort sequence and N it is the number of number of channel used. Number of uses of the channel so if you want to transmit l symbols source symbols through a channel using n number of using of the channel because there is a limit for the channel okay and then here you will see now i mean which we will do next day that how this number of bits per second through the channel will play a role here that will connect with this uh, information uh, mutual information i between u bar and l bar so here it says that uh, the mutual information between the or average mutual information between the input and output source symbols or source symbols okay is less equal to the mutual information between the input and output of the channel sequence okay uh, when you use n number of times and you use the channel n number of capital n number of times so this is one of the big theorem and then whatever we derived about the probability of error those results using those results and using this to and this data processing theorem will show that if source entropy okay is more than the channel capacity per unit time then there will be but that then the error probability will be positive okay there will be a chance of error so original question was you can send you can transmit information reliably through a noisy channel Okay, that can be obtained only when source entropy is less than the channel capacity per unit time. Okay, reliably meaning when the probability of error is less. Okay, is close to zero, arbitrary small, and we have defined what is called the poor error probability. And here we define specifically error probability, which is arithmetic mean when you are sending L number of source letters. Yeah, I'll stop here. So <clears throat> if you have any question, you can ask me now.